Oh yeah, Karina's saying start the watch party. Good. Yay! Hey. Good afternoon, welcome to Integrity Live. A little piece of music there. Today yeah. we're talking to Karina Moon. And that was you singing there, wasn't it? It was indeed. It was a live performance with my band um, a couple of years ago. Yeah, a song called Through Faces of You. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Thanks for putting that on. <laughs> do that yes uh so um tell to tell a few people about you because there's quite quite a lot of people know who you are some don't so please tell us a little bit about yourself so uh my name is corinna jane and um i'm a singer songwriter as well as a, a presenter um but here today we're talking about my uh, my music so i'll stick with that um yes so i'm, I'm a singer songwriter I play the piano i've got it in front of me you probably can't see it very well though um and it's a kind of quirky sort of driven pop rock i guess yeah, you write a lot of your own songs don't you as well, as well as doing covers you write a lot of your own songs i write all my own songs <laughs> I, don't, I don't do i don't sing songs that are written for me I, I because my main passion is indeed um you know write, writing songs that's first and foremost the thing i love i love doing is, is writing and creating that's the most important thing and you know obviously i enjoy doing covers for performances online you know i perform on twitch and um i also it's fun to release the odd thing because it raises your profile but ultimately my heart always lies with original material first and foremost excellent so what were your musical influences growing up who were your who did you like who was your like heroes growing up musically well i always like to tell this story but um it's funny because my my early memory of um music is watching a lot of MTV and I remember seeing Sheryl Crow doing um, All I Want to Do on TV and I was very very little and I said to my dad you know this is what I want to do um, I, don't, well, I don't know if I said that I very I'm thinking in my head and I said can I have a CD please so she was the first person to influence me and I remember that very early memory of receiving that CD but I guess growing up, I mean, I guess it all ranges from you know, my teens band, you know, bands that aren't really got much to do what I do, but you know, bands like The Killers I've loved, I've loved some of the bands Morissette and Tori Amos, I've loved, and even new sort of things like Casey Musgrave, some country as well, love bands like Green Day, you know, it varies, and obviously the old songs sort of like The Beatles and The Kinks and things like that. So it's really hard to pinpoint influences, so I just absorb everything, and then um, things just come out the way they do. Was your family very musical then, your mum and dad? My mother, not so much. She obviously appreciated and enjoyed music. Um, but no, uh, my father, he always played the piano um, when I was growing up. And we'd have little sing songs around the piano. I remember one of the sort of family favourites to sing was um, Streets of London. Um, and I think I was sort of copying what my father was doing. That's what led me to slaughters on the piano. I'm really sorry. I've got the old case, and you will know this from my Twitch streams. Okay, the robo voice there, and I feel like I could solve it. I don't, I don't want to uh, interrupt this the the uh, the stream, but um, let me just try something to oh. maybe to to stop that. Um, I yeah, I do apologise for that. It's most inconvenient, and um, on you know, my, I might even say that on my Twitch streams, I'm getting the nickname of robo voice, and everyone thinks I'm sort of some hidden away Doctor Who character with Daleks attacking me at every moment. So I do, I do apologize. Um, but while I sort that out, we, we can continue talking. So so it's not to disrupt the, the flow of the interview that we're conducting. Well, as, as everybody knows at the moment, uh, not talking about the interview, but at this time, because of the pandemic, a lot of people are working from home. So the streams get very, very narrow. So it is hard to get a good connection anyway. So don't worry about that so much. And when we watch your Twitch, which we'll talk about later, you do manage to sort things out. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, what, while you're doing it. that, are we back? I think so. You you, can you, there's no robot voice now, is there? No, it just keeps slightly in and out, but that's fine. Okay. Right, just before, <laughs> down, yeah, well, just keep your hands like that, don't touch it me. No. You're the tech person. You seem to sort it out, Karina. I'm, I'm always impressed when you sort things out. Um, just before lockdown, I know you was filming the single The Train. Um, so what else was you doing there? Is that your next big project? What is your next project that you want to do? 
so yeah just as lockdown began i had the first um incarnation because there's actually another version to come of my video for train and the reason it means so much to me is actually because it became such a local affair i had my local steam train donate me their train for um for two days um and then we had all these local people showed up because the local press got hold of it so i had 40 people on board my train on extremely cold december wow. afternoon and so it was a vision I had in my head for so many years. It was it was a real sort of pinchy moment to kind of think, wow, all these people have come together to be part of this video. It's amazing. So I'm going to get actually finished cinematic colored graded version of it very soon. So it's not we're not quite done with that train yet. But the thing I'm most excited about is actually my EP that I recorded in Rome um, just before Christmas in November. Wow. And it was one of those really lovely sound of moments how that came about because um, a year ago, um, I had a real sort of personal tragedy. My my mother passed away, and so everything I've done since has always it's always been a miracle that it's going through anything like that that you can just get up and, and carry on. And these seemingly wonderful things out of nowhere seem to happen. And Francesco in Rome got in touch with me on Instagram, said I'm a producer, and I thought, okay, well, I get a few messages like that. Sometimes there's some strange messages, but this time I thought, okay, I should. I should to this and I really liked what he was doing so I flew out to to Rome and I worked with him and we really really gelled and I was so excited because he's finally got my sounds he's able to fuse my singer songwritery sort of piano pop nature with a kind of rockier edge which is something that's very important to me so I'm, I'm very very excited about it so I want to release it in September and hopefully with lockdown restrictions easing a little bit I can shoot some great videos I'm just very excited about it. I feel like for me, it's sort of a, I've arrived kind of moment, I hope. So. We can't wait for that one to come out. And don't forget, once nearer the time, send us another article to Integrity Magazine and we'll feature in the magazine again. So for that, yeah, got to promote that. Yeah. Uh, quick question then. Your lyrics, some of your lyrics are amazing. So, I mean, one of the songs that I actually love is Pour Me a Glass of Tomorrow. Hey, well, <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's got to be time somewhere in the world. So, quick question: Can you tell us something about your songs? How you actually come to write them? Because they're also very different, but there's also a lot of meaning behind them. I think the viewers would be very interested to hear that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always very fascinating um, for people, whether you are a writer or not a writer, to hear how people write their songs because everybody has a different method now. For me, I'm usually very melody driven, so I hear the melodies in my head first, and they'll often come with maybe one lyric, like one line that sort of dictates the feeling of the song, and then the lyrics happen after. But it usually happens sort of when I'm not meaning to write. So in the middle of the night, I hear the melody, I hear the lyric, um, and then it sort of takes on from there. And um, although I do, there are times when I sit down and say, I'm going to write a song, but I've literally found that I've never written a song I'm happy with when I force it out of myself. The pour me glass tomorrow, as you just <laughs> what are you drinking? Is it is it rose? Um, just a little rose, yes. Great. Oh, I, sh I wish I'd got myself a glass. I've got some rose downstairs. I should have. I've got lemon and ginger tea. That's not very rock and roll, is it? Um. Anyway, so pour me glass tomorrow. I mean, that's an interesting one because my mother, um, one dinner a couple of years ago, had accidentally said, um, "Could you pour me a glass of tomorrow? I mean, wine." And sort of being the French woman she was that was always a very good idea i fully supported another glass of wine but she said tomorrow and i said that's so interesting i mean when it was going on your subconscious because it sounded like a country song title so i kind of collated around that time all these different things i'd seen on my you know way about life and i was going through some heartache and i just sort of thought i'd write a song about life's rich tapestry you know there's also a line about like the sort of drunken sort of homeless guys running around the street, but he seems to be preaching things because he sort of knows the meaning of life and all these things a lot more than maybe that corporate person like walking around the city, you know, these sort of contrasting things. So I put it in this song, but when my my mum passed away, it took on a whole new meaning because those lyrics I'd written three years ago about a heartache that I'm, you know, I'm over now, it felt like, well, this this heart is always going to stay with me, and she's the one that's influenced that. And so it's it's those it's, it's beautiful sort of serendipitous moments that happen when you write songs and they take on meanings in, in different senses. Yeah. And that is a really lovely song, by the way. It's one of my favourites of yours. Thank you. And you know what my favourite of yours is, don't you? 
um is it echoes or uh yes it is yeah. ah <laughs> when did that come about because that's a great song so echoes of my mind was a song that i wrote again sort of after a breakup and i was a little bit over the place um it wasn't a particularly nice sort of relationship but i was grieving it nonetheless and i just sort of i just sang it out loud no i said echo i'm not in my in my mind and um and then I kind of forgot about it. I thought maybe this is a bit miserable. And then I was um, on the train, funny enough, I have a song called The Train. And then I was on a train um, one time and I was going for my voice notes. And I was like, oh, what, what's this thing? I have no idea what this thing is. And it, it turned out that um, it was it was echoes of mine. I thought, actually, why did I let this slip through the net? So I went and went back home and I, and I was writing the lyrics on the train. And it's about grief and it's about sort of trying to move on from something. Um, you know, heartache or something. Hey, my dad's got me the glass of rosé to join you. Well done. That's amazing. <laughs> Cheers. Salute. Yay. Yeah. Daytime drinking and look down. Woohoo. Mm. Absolutely. Good old. Good tea. Um, yeah, echoes. Yeah, so then it just happened like that, and it was sort of about, you know, moments coming in and out of your mind and, you know, trying to move on, but they sort of possess you a little bit. So, um, and that's sort of my, my inner darkness, you know, I'm quite a chirpy person, but, but I, the darkness comes out in the songs, so. That's nothing wrong with that, that's good. Uh, now you do a show every Tuesday, Thursday, and some Sundays, or most Sundays, but before I talk about that, it's been interrupted lately because you've been concentrating on something else, haven't you? If I say the magical toy shop? Yeah, the magical toy shop. So, I mean, this is one of those, again, you know, I've been speaking a lot about, you know, these things My life just seems to find a way of making some of your ideas come true. And I've always wanted to do film and, and sort of TV competitions. So I do a lot of piano pieces as well. And um, AJ is uh, Alexander Lamb, who runs Dawn Sky Films, um, is an amazingly talented young filmmaker who I came across the, the film scene as I came across you as well. And um, yeah. And he's just a beautiful short film, all set in this beautiful toy shop. There's a really lovely story between a grandfather and his uh, granddaughter. And uh, I won't give away too much. I, I don't feel like I have the right to do that. Um, but AJ approached me to come up with some lovely, whimsical piano pieces to fit the film. So I've been, I've been really busy working on that. And we're just sort of in the post-production stages and tweaking stages right now. So um, it's um, very exciting for me, and it's it is a dream come true, really. But I never thought I'd have the opportunity to do that. Oh, we're we'll looking forward to that. That's going to be very interesting. So let's talk about Twitch now. During lockdown, there's been a lot of things happening. I'll, I'll see a lot of I see Marissa and the Moss do a show. Uh, Will Black, uh, my friend Dell's doing one on Saturday. But your shows are unbelievable. I absolutely love your Twitch shows. They're really really good. And the, the, the funny thing about them, the time just flies. Sometimes it's two hours, three hours. Um, how did you get into Twitch? Oh, oh, this is again, just a li lovely moment where things just sort of come about. So um, my neighbor, Luke, um, it's crazy. You know, I've been, I mean, I'm back at my, my parents' house at the moment, but for all the years, I went, I went to London, I've come back for the moment. But all the years I've been here, I didn't, I didn't know Luke crossed the way. You know, we just kind of went and did our own lives. And one day, he had some flowers misdelivered to his house in my name. And he just Googled me and then found that I did some music. And he's really, really into music, really into singer songwriters. And um, he bought a CD. And then a couple of years later in November, I receive an email from Luke saying, I'm gonna introduce this website called Twitch. And I had absolutely no idea what it was. Um, and he introduced me to it. And it wasn't very complicated at first, but he told me that there are singer songwriters on there that have really done very well, have been able to build an audience and earn money as well. And I thought, well, this, this sounds great. This is a real solution for the independent artists of today. It's very technical to set up, which is why not everybody's doing it. So, but um, as you know, I mean, right now, Robo Voice is very much threatening to come back. So, yeah, I got, I got into that when I've been, and then funny enough, lockdown provided the perfect opportunity to really cultivate that. So it's been wonderful. And I usually have my, you can't see him, but I'm going to introduce, I usually have my wonderful bear, Harvey. But, oh gosh, he's just, ah. Where, where's his hat? Yes. Yes. And you've been wearing a hat in tribute, oops, in tribute to him, um, because every Sunday we play change the hat on the bear. 
and we, we pick a hat for Harvey to wear. Uh, and so my audience like to choose one. I, he, Harvey loves your hat. He's got one like that as well. He think, he says, you say Harvey? He says it's very fetching and he thinks you wear it better than he does. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I named that hat anyway. That's the Crocodile Dundee hat, isn't it? It is. It's a beautiful hat. I feel like we need to get some more hats for Harvey's yeah. collection. We had a Fez hat donated the other day, actually. That's right, Harvey. yeah. We, we, so we, we, can, we can put that on as well. <laughs> and when people get the time, after we've seen this interview and when the interview's finished, you should look onto some of Karina's um, Twitch shows. And you can see Harvey singing at one time as well. That'd be quite Harvey interesting. And you probably all think we're joking, but actually, Jenny does, does sing. Yeah. So we're, going to, we're going to put Harvey back now. Yeah. Um, because let me have a rest. Be <laughs> Too busy. Yeah, he's he's currently he's currently taking calls for his acting work because obviously he's a very busy busy bear. So. Bless him. Uh, one of the songs you do on your Twitch is one of my favourite songs of all time, and you cover it brilliantly. REM, Losing My Religion. What made you decide to cover that song? Um, I don't, you know, it's one of those things, I had a flash of inspiration one day. I, I love that song. It's been a song that's sort of followed me around throughout my whole life. My dad always loved REM, and it's just it's just a great song. It's one of those songs, that every time it comes on the radio, I just never get bored with listening to it. Um, I just, because I like to Absolutely. take, when I do do a cover, I like to take a song that you wouldn't expect sort of a female singer songwriter to do. I find it much more interesting and exciting to take, like I've done a painted black cover as well, you know, take a song that's totally different to what I do and just do sort of my own whimsical sort of version of it. And I just thought, this would be really fun. And I sort of tinkered around it one day on the piano. I thought, oh, this is interesting. And now I've just been very humbled and completely surprised and blown away with how well it's done on Spotify, thanks to a, a label that put it out. So I, I went on Instagram the other day and, and uh, some girl tagged me in her video of her pole dancing to my song, to my version of that. <laughs> wow, this has reached a whole new level of audiences now. So. On Spotify, how many viewers has it got at the moment? How many views, do you, do you remember roughly? Last time I checked, it had 130,000. It's probably about 140 because it's sort of, it keeps going up because it's on various playlists and then people save it onto their playlist. So I can see the playlist been saved onto. So there's this restaurant somewhere in Spain that I've got it on their playlist. It's just, it's crazy. I find it really exciting. It makes me really yeah. excited about life. <laughs> That's fabulous. It's really good. Uh, well, I'm, I've been lucky to work with you at a few film premieres and also see you in concert, etc. And I was very, very lucky to photograph you playing the piano in that hotel oh, at yeah. Jay's film premiere. How do you see concerts when lockdown ends? How do you see concerts happening? It's it's going to be very strange, isn't it? I think, OK, while, while there is a threat of the pandemic, I think we just have to adapt rather than cancel. Mm. Um, I think it does concern me, you know, my my, um, my hometown of Northampton. Um, there's some great venues that are struggling there, like really key venues. And that, that concerns me because, you know, you want them to still be there afterwards because live music has been suffering for a number of years now and so many great venues have already closed down. So on a positive note, I hope that the lockdown will actually give a resurgence to live music and people supporting venues more because they suddenly realise absence makes the heart grow fonder and that you can't be totally confined to the internet the whole time. And it's we've had a really interesting, I mean, just not to go slightly, we've had a very interesting time because this lockdown has made us realise that there are some great things about the internet and actually the fact that we are able to stay in touch has been a good thing rather than a negative thing of the constant bombardment. But at the same time, I do hope it will bring back face-to-face -face connections in fashion again. You know, there's been a, a whole sort of generation now that's been cultivated behind screens. So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to adapt. So I've heard about drive-through gigs. I think that's a little bit diff more difficult to manage somewhere like the UK where we're quite cramped with space. But um, I think we're just going to have to adapt somehow um, and... It, it is I mean, it's more open air concerts. Um, yeah. I guess that's what we're going to have to do even in the winter, perhaps more heaters. I just, I don't really know is the answer to that. And I, I just think 
Um, it's common sense as well at the end of the day. Maybe we'll bring back and uh, send some more intimate, smaller gigs, but with big spaces between people, perhaps. I think that's another thing. Uh, that'll be hard to manage, though, won't it? It really will be difficult. Because, yeah. as you know, when, when you go to a gig, I mean, you put on gigs, but when you go to yourself, you want to stand next to your friend and sort of like be happy next to them, saying, Yeah, I'm really enjoying the music. And standing away from someone is not going to really work, in my opinion. So it's going to be right. very interesting. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem is, it's a bit like the pub's opening this weekend. It's like, you know, you want to go in the sense you want to support the businesses and the local ones, especially the independent ones. But does it make a fun day out? Does it make a fun day out to have to give your name, your address? Does it make a fun day out to not be able to speak to anyone really? And, you know, it's a, it's clinical. It's it's stressful. Um, until it starts to become the norm and then people adapt, don't they? If it has to be the norm for a while, then people will make it the norm. But, but it's always those teething problems at the start. So people, all right, people know you from now and also they watch your Twitch know about you doing your music but you've also done travel programs haven't you did you enjoy doing those yeah it doesn't look like i'm doing much traveling soon no, um, no. um but you know if anyone wants to what travel vicariously through me i do have a mallorca travel show up thanks to um the company uh, i worked with called not just travel so i've got that up on my youtube channel if you want to go through like a little 10 mini video series of mallorca um and also Lapland uh, and the Barcelona racing track. Um, yeah, I, it was great fun to go traveling around the world and present and do some the videos uh, for that. Um, and I do I do miss it. I really, I really miss it tremendously. And I think um, I, I did just concern me about the travel industry suffering a bit. I think there's a bit of a resurgence in the boom now because people are able to go away again. And I think um, you know, it'd be really great if maybe in the future I could do some travel shows that were trying to I guess encourage people to travel again because I think people will have yeah. a certain fear and I think they're going to need Absolutely. a bit of um encouragement probably. Mm. But as long as you don't stop your singing because that is important to us. Yes. Oh yeah, no I, I want to forever be known as a traveling singer songwriter. Um All right. I'm gonna ask you one final question, then we may be getting something special out of you in a minute, which we'll tell the viewers in a second. But obviously we're called integrity. What does integrity mean to you, Karina? That's a very good question. I don't want to give you a waffly answer, so I want, I want to just think about that. Um, I think okay. integrity, I think I think it's doing, I mean, without sounding really corny about it, it, it is about being true to yourself. But, you yeah. know, being true to yourself also sounds quite wishy-washy. And I think the whole concept of integrity and saying true to yourself, it's really about following what you believe to be the right for you to not be influenced by other people if it's having a negative impact on you to always follow what it is that you want to be doing with your life or your values your beliefs and um and as long as you're not hurting anybody i think that's the most important thing there's so many people that kind of sleepwalk through their life thinking oh which is a great video of the day by um comedian and sort of life coach by jp sears he's quite he's quite well known on the internet now he does these funny videos but he does these good videos and he said there's many people that spend their lives trying to be the person they think they're supposed to be and cause themselves trauma rather than just being the person they are and i think to have integrity it's about not standing with the crowd if that's not what you want to do and and always, always, it's your life. I mean, you just, you got to do what you want to do with your life. It's, like, it's absolutely nobody's business to tell you how to run your life. Even if your dreams are really, really big and other people think you're, you're mad. So what? You have fun along the way following what you want to do or your dream. Absolutely. And that's what, all that counts. Absolutely. We, we are breaking up a little bit now, but we, can we try and <laughs> see if you can actually give us a special surprise? I, th I think what I have to do, because it's it's at the level, the Roma voice is at the, the level of it, it verging on intolerable. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly switch it off and on again, that classic um, technical um, system. So um, as I do that, may maybe um, perhaps if you if you if you speak for 30 seconds because you won't able to hear me while i do that i'm so sorry i know this is very clunky but i will come back with a song 
uh, while I just fix this annoying problem. So I'm going to, I'm okay. going to me as of now. <laughs> you, you do what you got to do and I'll, I'll tell the viewers what's going to happen. Okay. Okay. Karina has agreed to try and play a song for us now, but she might need to reset the system. It won't take that long. And so we're going to have a song from Karina, one of her own songs. Uh, fingers crossed it all works. She said, look, if, you could, if she had any flags, she could do semaphore, but, you know, unfortunately we haven't got them. <laughs> oh, the cat's going to wave, yes. So fingers crossed, we can hear one of Karina's own songs. She's just still getting it going now. That's a perfume bottle in there. We could have got Harvey to sing as well, but Harvey's Harvey won't sing for the month unless he gets paid. So, mm, see, Harvey's like that. How are we doing, Karina? Are we close? Sorry about the delay. Ah, but ah, we're back. Yeah, yeah we're, we're back. back. Yeah. So leave it in your hands. Great. You just play away. Fantastic. Okay, so this is my song called Echoes of My Mind. It's on Spotify and YouTube and music video and all that stuff as well. Thank you very much. Hiding 
in the back of my conscious state Such a wonderful sound Such a beautiful way to hit the ground Oh, such a bittersweet taste Such a perfect waste You're hiding in the back of my conscious state A wonderful sound a beautiful way to hit the ground when I hear you call. When I hear you call, we are close on my mind. Cheers. Excellent. Even with the connection problems, still beautiful. Such a great song. Thank you very really much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your time today. And thank you for singing. I really appreciate it. And well, anybody me. wants thank to. Oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure. Uh, so check out uh, from Integrity Magazine, etc. And also look at Karina's website, which is your website. It needs a little updating. <laughs> Corinna Jane dot com. I'm on the all the social, all the Instas, the there's the YouTube, the the whole lot. <laughs> Especially in the old days, we used to have MySpace. Everything was just on MySpace, but yeah. It's easier. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you again for your time, and I hope to see you soon. And I can't wait to see you in concert soon, whenever that will be. Yeah. One day we'll all be reunited in person. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening. And Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.